Hi, my name is Danny Ward and this is Knowledgeica. Do dogs sweat? That age-old question. But how do dogs cool off? While us humans have sweat glands that work predominantly through our skin, our four-legged companions don't share quite the same luxury. The most effective and most commonly observed practice of cooling off is through heat exchange. This is achieved mostly through the tongue via panting where the large moist surface area allows for fast evaporation aiding to the cooling process. In addition, it is also thought that the panting mechanism allows further evaporation to occur from deep within the lungs. Vasodilation is another strategy employed by old Fido. This causes blood vessels to expand closer to the skin surface due to the relaxation of smooth muscle cells within the major veins, arteries and arterioles, allowing for easier heat transfer. The heat carried by the blood is transferred quickly to the air, resulting in a much cooler pooch. While dogs do possess a concentrated number of true sweat glands located on the foot pads, these are not considered to be enough to cool them down to a comfortable level alone due to the small surface area. The same goes for a small collection of sweat glands in a dog's nose. These are highly unlikely to contribute to cooling due to the small surface area. However, research has suggested that these may instead be used for sensory function as they allow the inner surface of the nose to remain moist, enhancing the sense of smell. The sweat secretion from these sweat glands, which are called eccrine glands, like our own, is comprised of a mixture of electrolytes including bicarbonate, potassium and sodium chloride, along with a variety of other carbohydrates and peptides. Well then, you're probably wondering by now, what gives our canine companions that distinct fragrance they are all known for? In addition to the eccrine glands, dogs also have apocrine sweat glands located between the dermis and subcutaneous fat layer, the hair follicle. For us humans, we are gifted with these pungent glands in the armpits, nipples, ear canal, eyelids and around the groin. But dogs are even luckier having them all over the body. It's these magical glands that release an oily secretion comprised of fatty acids and glycoprotein, such as cyalomucin. And this beautiful liquid actually lacks an odour. So how does it kick up such a stink? The answer? Bacterial degradation. Bacteria such as Bacillus, Staphylococcus and Cornybacterium enjoy nothing more than a good old chow down on this apocrine secretion through fermentation, aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration. You can't expect to eat all that and not release a little bit of waste. Through bacterial metabolism of the apocrine secretion, things known as volatile organic compounds or VOCs for short, are released, which recent research has shown to be comprised heavily of six main offenders. Butyric acid, dimethyl disulfide, and diethyl trisulfide are potent, rancid, buttery, onion-like odors. Two heptanone, two nonanone, and two octanone are fruitier aromas. However, I'm quite sure they won't be making any perfume with these for quite some time. In addition to this, dogs and the delightful odour is also contributed by more of these VOCs produced by even more bacteria located in the hair itself. As wet dog hair dries, these compounds are released into the air and straight into our nostrils. Benzaldehyde, phenylacetaldehyde, acetaldehyde, phenyl, 2-methylbutanol, paracresol, 1-octin-3-l, and I hope you're ready for this last one. 2,3-diethyl-5-methylpyrazine all help to give your pooch its characteristic wet dog scent. So, it's a hot summer's day and Fido isn't doing too great in the heat. How can we keep him cool? While it's not common practice for 
us to go around wearing thick fur jackets during the blistering hot summer months. In regards to a dog coat, however, be sure to hold off on those clippers. A dog's fur coat is comprised of several layers that offer insulation that can keep the dog cool in the summer months as well as warm in the winter, so it's best to avoid shaving down to skin level. A good brush and a light trim, however, certainly won't do any harm, as this can actually help to improve the airflow. You now know where the sweat glands are, so avoid hot pavements to help facilitate better heat exchange from the dog's feet. With all this panting and sweating, there's going to be quite a bit of water that needs replacing too, so be sure to keep a nice cold bowl of H2O close by. And of course, if all else fails, a trip to the local dog-friendly lake or pool will certainly help do the trick. Much to everyone else's dismay once Fido decides it's time to get out and shake dry. This has been Knowledgeica. Stay hungry for factuality.